Good morning, Bangkok. <laughs> Good morning. So thank you all for, for being here today. It's uh, the launch of Creative Mornings Bangkok, and uh, we didn't expect it, so many people to be here today, but we are so excited and so thankful that you're all here today to celebrate uh, the launch of uh, Creative Mornings Bangkok. Please give a warm welcome to Kun Banu Inkawat. I'm Banu Inkawat. I'm the creative director of Greyhound Bangkok which I can assure you that it's nothing to do with the Greyhound bus line in the U.S. Uh, and um, we are part of a Madman group as well. So before I address the title that I put up there, let me go back to the theme that was given to me, empathy. Empathy means um, the ability to understand and relate to one another. Right? And as you know, that um, there's a big difference between look and see, hear and listen. I should know that I have the biggest e equipment for that. <laughs> but I still sometimes don't listen. And also um, acknowledge, you know, people do this, but do they really understand or believe it? That's something different. Let me elaborate by telling you a little story, a story that um, even though it's a small story, but I always remember it. There is this blind beggar boy sitting in front of a train station. Uh, and in front of him, there's a sign that say, uh, I'm blind, please help. A man walked past him in the morning and he see this boy and he look at the boy. In front of him, there's a hat and it's empty. So he dropped in a few coins and he picked up the sign and rewrite something on it. After the man left, the boy was really happy because he can hear this clinking sound of the coin all day. So when the evening came, the man walked back to the train station to get on the train back home. He saw the boy still sitting there. So he said hi to the boy. The boy was really happy to know that this, this man came back, so he asked him, what did you write on my board this morning? Because I'm so happy today, I, I get a lot of coins from people. And he said, oh, I just wrote the fact, but in a different way, I, the way that people would like to hear it. And I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I can't see. The first sign, talk at people why the second sign talk to people and involve them with feelings. This is a small story that I probably got it from a forward mail a long, long time ago, but it's still, I kept it at the back of my mind uh, all the time because it taught me a lot. You know, with the same piece of paper and a pen, you can write anything down, you can twist the word, but with some thinking, planning, you can twist the word into a more meaningful ideas. And from my advertising day, I learned that um, it's better to talk with people with the heart than the head. Um, I don't know, is, is it the same around the world, but in Thai, there are a lot of words that relate to heart, uh, like Jairon, in Thai we say hot-hearted instead of hot-head, like in English. Or Khop Jai, which is thank you, but we say thank you with the heart. Or Chun Jai is appreciated with the heart. It would be kind of funny, right, to say thank you with the head. <laughs> or I really appreciate what you do with, with all my head. <laughs> so from that, I learned a lot that um, 
there is no point in talking to people, you know, by just talking, 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 and no, nobody listen. Um, it's better to to talk to them with certain feeling and involve them to do something. Heart is something irrational that you cannot measure it by logic, right? That's why a lot of the time you say, I, I don't like it, but I, I don't know why. That's how your heart felt. I once did a campaign uh, on the energy saving, and the brief this came from this uh, government office uh, give us a, a long list of things that people can do to save energy. But, <clears throat> uh, and also, you know, as you know, government always require a long, informative kind of commercial and with authoritative voice, you know, telling people what to do and so on. But we thought that um, that's not the way. I mean, it's to change the behavior of somebody. It's not just give them a list of things to do and they'll just follow just like that. But instead, this is how we did it.กินทิ้งกินฟากจำเทียมมาเคยสอนให้ท่องก่อนกินข้าวได้ไหมป่อปานั้นหายากต้องลำบากออกเรือไปขนส่งจากแกลนไกใช้น้ำแข็งเปล
people recognize but sympathize with you. And not only with what you do, but more is with, with what you believe. I don't know whether you've seen this talk by Simon Sinek uh, at TED Talk on the theory of uh, golden circle. Anyone lis have listened to this? Yeah, right? It's a great talk. If you haven't listened, please go into TED Talk and check it out. He uh, talked about this theory of golden circle, but the one thing that he put it in a very simple and very memorable way is that he said, people don't buy what you do, but they buy what you believe. The best example is Apple computer. Apple is another computer company, but instead of selling all the technology and the feature, gadget and all that, just like another company, another computer company, and they said, no, that's, we don't want to be just another company, but instead they, they sell their attitude and their belief, which is thing different. Steve Jobs said that Apple is not bits and boxes. It's the, 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 the thing that will evoke your creativity to change the world. That's huge. That's why we continue not only to buy their computer, but their mobile phone, their uh, MP3, and you know, all this kind of thing. Just because we think that we are, we are sharing with this uh, belief. But I have never worked with Apple I, because I don't know how their organization is. But I work with an, another organization who also talked to me through that belief. Uh, I should know this because I've been working with this company for 25 years. And I consider myself very lucky to grow up in that company. I'm talking about an, an advertising agency called Leobinet. Uh Libanet, uh, I stayed there for 25 years and I haven't moved at all from one agency, although I have a lot of offer from different agencies. But I decided to stay there, well, not only because they offer me a good salary, but they have this belief that I can share with and I can identify myself with. Libanet believed that everything we do has to be at the high, high quality of idea. They say that superior advertising, best in the world by none. That's the standard that they put it up. Uh, and he, they have his, his motto on the lobby of every offices around the world. Uh, it say, when you reach for the star, you may not quite get one, but you will not come up with a handful of mud either. It's a way to say higher standard without forcing you to, 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 to be like that, you know? Very philosophical for me. So um, this motto is not just word on the wall. They actually wholeheartedly practice this. And even though it's, Libanet is a big company then, 20 years ago, they have 50 offices around the world, uh, but somehow I feel like I was working with a small company, a, a company that have a style of management that closely knitted between the top management and the staff, and it makes us feel good, you know? And this doesn't only apply to the work that we do, we, it's applied to everything applied to the way that we recruit our people, the way that we select the client, the way that we decorate the office to create that the atmosphere that you know make everyone feel this way. Even like the way we design the community outing. We have to be, you know, like the best in the world by none. So it's become part of our everyday life. And the most important thing is how the staff was kind of stuck into this and kind of blindly believe this uh, philosophy, you know, so much. And so did I, I guess. That's why I stayed there for 25 years. But 
after 25 years, I decided to leave and to pursue my own dream. And Greyhound always been my sort of baby along the way. And uh, although it was started as a sort of a hobby among friends, but it continued to grow and grow. And when I left Leverdet and worked at Greyhound full time, I also start to ask myself, so, so what, what is Greyhound and uh, why Greyhound does what uh, they're doing now today? So, you know, we've been asking ourselves, people who've been working at Greyhound also, that, so what are we? In order to, to have this understanding and sharing this uh, understanding. First, let me explain to you, although we are a fashion company, but we're not a fashion designer by practice. None of us sort of went through fashion design school. Uh, I did graphic design, another head designer uh, studied fine art, another studied interior design. But there's something in common that we share, which is we, we enjoy shopping, we like uh, fashion, we like dressing up, we like buying things, mixing and match things together, and create our own style. And when we opened the first cafe, we also sort of didn't know how to run a restaurant. We, none of us went to Gordon Bleu or business school to know about how to run a restaurant. But again, there's something in common that we like, which is we like tasting different food, we like street food, we, we go around different places and sharing addresses of good places to eat and so on. So, at the end, you know, I asked all my team, you know, what are we doing? What is, what are we really is? Uh, what, what are so we really are and what are we, what is our belief? So this is what we come up with. We are kind of born out of love. We are not a fashion company or we are not a, a food operator in the traditional sense. We are we are a creative lifestyle company who believe that every day life can be simple, but it doesn't have to be boring. And this is what we do. We're twisting the basic of lifestyle every day. You wear white shirt, black trousers, black shoes to work. How can you twist that around, adding some creativity something that people can also experience and also take part to express themselves through our product. That's the idea of the hound. That's why our shirt, a white shirt, doesn't have to be a, a, a boring white shirt. This is a shirt that we designed about 20 years ago, I guess. Uh, it's, a, it's a dress shirt combined with casual shirt. So you don't feel like you are normal and everyday person just wearing the shirt. Or this one is a sweater that we designed. Instead of one way, you can do it, you can wear it different way. So there's a creativity added when you put it on, you can feel like, yeah, I can be creative as well. Or this one, a dress. Greyhound is not very feminine. We don't do a lot of dresses, but when we do a dress, it has to say something. This is a pleated dress that we put pleated in a different way to create the volume and so on. So it's another way of doing a typical dress, you know. This one is a sort of a crutch bag that uh, ladies use, uh, like to sort of wear it when they go out to a party. But instead of normal crutch bag, we introduce a ser series of pocketbook crutch bag that like when you walk into a party, like you are holding a pocketbook, but actually in there is a crash bag that you can uh, put things in it. So it's, and again, it's another fun way to play with the accessory. We also challenge ourselves, what is other way than using the fabric to make fashion? So we said, what about paper? Which is something that nobody would think of making paper, uh, fashion out of paper. And this is how we came up with. You know, every, every time when they do the embroidery, they would do a tracing paper 
and put it on the fabric and then do the uh, sewing uh, uh, following the tracing. So this is how we, they do it. We leave it like this and we sell the t-shirt like this. So every time you wash, you get a new t-shirt every time because the paper starts falling off until the last thing is when you only the embroidery on the, on the shirt. Or, you know, every time you leave a piece of paper in the pocket and you send it to laundry, what happens? It becomes soggy, it becomes sort of gooey, you know? And so that's the idea. We follow that thinking and then put a piece of paper, but it's a special paper, sew onto the pocket. Just to make your day a little bit more fun, a little bit more creative, I guess. Is this a, uh, a sweater or a bag? You can wear it this, this way, you can wear it this way, you can wear it this way. What is this? An underwear? No, not really. It's a wallet. <laughs> when it comes to shop decoration, again, uh, how can we add this creativity into the, the, the shop space as well. So this one, we create an apartment. So it's just like your apartment. Is it your shop? You know, it's, it's your place, it's our place. Something that people can link together with the brand. Or this one, instead of a normal fashion shop, it's an art gallery, straight art gallery, that you can look in, buy, take it home, Play with it, whatever you want. When it comes to food, also, it's food with a twist. When we first uh, opened the restaurant, you know, we, we asked ourselves, so what kind of food that they have to serve? So we go back to the same thinking of basic with a twist. What about food with a twist? This is in Thai, you say, carpet pool, right? Fried rice with crab. But life is not all about fried rice. So what about crab with fried rice instead? So we put a lot of tons of crab in it, only a little bit of fried rice, of the, of the rice. So suddenly, it's just simple basic thing, but by just twisting it, twisting it around, it sort of attracts the attention of people and make, it, make people enjoy the menu more. This one is called Buffalo Burger. Uh, we use the buffalo mozzarella, so why not introducing a black bun? So the look is like a buffalo, so we call it buffalo burger. <laughs> this one is top tim crop. You know, top tim crop is a Thai dessert. It's very common. You can find it on the street uh, anywhere. But normally they would do it with the crushed ice and this top tim, which is the chestnut uh, with the flour. But instead, we use the uh, coconut juice to freeze it into ice, shape it, and that's become the crushed ice inside. So as you eat, you get the aroma of this coconut juice all the way to the end. And also this one we play with lot chong. Lot chong is also a typical Thai dessert, and we do it in a panna cotta style. But the fragrance of this palm sugar that we use in lot chong really help make this panna cotta taste different from the Italian one. And this is our signature drink, the um, uh, uh, iced tea, which we make the ice cube out of tea. So as it melts, you still get the full flavor of the tea rather than you know, diluted because of the ice. And even the uniform, it also can reflect our attitude and our style. So actually it started off because our, our staff do not like to talk or converse with our customers. We keep telling them, please say something, talk to them. They don't, they don't say anything. So let the uniform talk to the people. Like this one, life is too short, more dessert anyone or it may, I may not look cute, but I recommend good dishes. 
Life is not all about how bad. You are not my real boss. Uh, uh, you, are, you are my real boss, not him in the back suit. So just play around with this. Suddenly you get the feeling like what Vincent said, I, I guess. Or a chandelier at our restaurant instead of normal chandelier. We use glasses, we use old fork and spoon and things like that to create the chandelier. Um, I, I believe that these simple things in life with the creative twist are how our customer identify themselves with our brand. Not only because they sympathize with our brand uh, for what we do, but because we, we have touched uh, the human inside that we are the same. You know, we are sick of everyday life. You wake up in the morning, you wear the office clothes, you go to work, and so on. So how can we add this little bit of spice, a little bit of creativity into our life to make it less boring? But as you know today, the word creativity becomes such a buzzword. Every business all must have this creativity as part of the strategy or ingredients. So how can we be dif different you know, when the customer is all bombarding with creative this, creative that all the time? For me, it is not just being creative that matters, but because anyone can you know, do creative things. Uh, instead, I think you have to be truly understand the core value of your brand first before you start applying this creativity into it. And in order to, for you to able to carry on working day after day, building the, the strength in the, the core value of the brand. Well, as I said, the brand is not what you say it is, it is what they say it is. So you have to make sure that they are the one who say, what, who are you and what is your belief? That's why today I still have to continue uh, to be true to our core value and keep producing this simple but never boring product or, or you know, offer that attitude to, to our customer. Like the, uh, last week, we just had a, a party at our office to celebrate the 35 years uh, anniversary and we had fashion show and we have sort of drink party and all that. So there, we have to serve some food and we thought, how can we do something that is not like party food, pass around, uh, sort of uh, small, you know, hand, uh, sort of food that, like that. So we decided to to serve a uh, Greyhound food truck. You know, food truck is a, it's a big hit thing now, right? Everybody's talking about food truck and so on. But how can we do food truck in a Greyhound style? So we decided to serve Tom Yam noodle, uh, pork noodle, Tom Yam pork noodle. And it's like the, all the street food, you know, with a very tasty, very spicy Tom Yam. But instead of normal rice noodle that uh, they serve, we offer people different type of noodle from around the world, like soba, like udon, like spaghetti, like um, grass noodle, Japanese grass noodle. So people have a different choice, and suddenly there's a, a different taste mixed into your everyday tom yum uh, noodle. And this is how the tom yum uh, food truck look like. And fashion show also. We didn't do a typical runway fashion show with a proper runway. Instead, we put the, the model to mingle inside the, um, the audience. And they actually walk around and be part of the, uh, of the audience. So it was a different type of uh, fashion show that people didn't expect. Um, People always ask me, where do we, do we get our inspiration from? And because we are a street brand, so the best way is to look around our street. And, you know, maybe in our neighborhood or wherever we go, we always look for inspiration from the street. Like, for example, this guy is a bum. He walks around Sukhumvit every day, and I see him every day. So I stop and ask 
him with that can I take his photo? But look at the way that he designed his short, his hat. It's amazing, isn't it? That can be inspiration for our next collection. This guy is for real. He is a, he is a sort of a merchant, you know, a street merchant who walk around selling this canoe. And he came to my house uh, when we were building a new, uh, a new house in our, in our backyard and to sell the canoe to the construction worker. And this is the way he dressed. And he changed his suit every day. And I asked him, why do you have to dress like this? And he said, I'm a businessman. <laughs> so that's how the businessman looks. So I want to be one. This guy is um, uh, the tattoo guy. Tattoo in Thailand, we sometimes uh, over overlook him, you know, because uh, it's so normal. We see this type of people everywhere. But Hollywood movie star come to Bangkok to do this tattoo in, in Thailand. So why don't we look around and have a, have a closer look at him? Maybe he can inspire us to something. Lee is a Thai classical drama that uh, very, very, very common uh, in upcountry. But look at the costume that they design. It used to be traditional Thai classical dance costume, but now they are mixing with international fashion style and the way that it come up is so amazing. This is construction worker at my home and they were building my new home. And when they are together, you, you see them on the truck every morning uh, when they go to the site. And when they are, to, when they are together, it's so colorful. It's, so, it's, it's like a collection by itself. And you see this bag everybody wearing. It's made out of cement bag. They just cut it out. And it's, it's, a, it's a fashion among these people. So maybe we can borrow that. And this is my favorite. A boy and his latest swimwear. So just around the street, all the basic things that you can pick up and twist it around, and it can be a great new idea. So to sum up what I've been talking this morning, first, don't talk at people. Talk to them. Involve them with feeling when you want them to do something or buy something. Not only just advertising. I mean, anything. If, if you have to design a furniture, a piece of furniture, talk to them. Let them involve in your design. Or even to run an, an organization. You know, talk to them. Get them involved. The other thing is, think different. Instead of starting your idea from yourself, go on the opposite side and look at it from the opposite end feel what they need, feel what their uh, belief is, and trying to involve them in that side, in that side, from that side. And I love this one. People don't buy what you do, they buy what you believe. Thank you, Simon. It's a great thought. And once you have this belief, make sure you be very persistent. You know, a lot of the time we just treat the job one by one or day by day. But instead, you have to, to link everything together, have this sort of small thread that tie it all together in order to reflect back to the core value of the brand. And lastly is make sure that each project continue to excite you and keep you on your toe. See, you, you, you know, see how it slowly forms each project. You can sculpt it, you can shape it, you can slap it, you can cut it, whatever you do. Make sure that you are happy to be part of that process. And that's what excites me or drives me out of bed every morning. And what drives you, uh, or a better word, what is your belief? Thank you very much. Any one of you have a question for Kunbanu? Yes? Thank you.
Okay. Um, when we started, we were maybe 10 people working together. It's so easy to share the thoughts, share the idea. But because now the company has become big, much bigger, uh, it's getting harder and harder. But for me, I learned that there's the job of the top management to keep communicating this thought, sharing this idea to them, and get them involved. We do a lot of workshops at the company in order to ask, uh, brainstorm with them, sharing our tasks with them, you know. So it's not just everything come from me alone, but a lot of our service staff would become part of the thinking process, how to improve the product, how to improve the process and all that. So it's not just, you know, the top management that tell everybody how to do things. Like every year we have this um, uh, quality control thing, which is uh, test, test, uh, test uh, control by bringing all the chefs from every branches to cook together, same dishes, and let, people, let, let other, other chefs in another branch test how different they are in order to learn from one another. And at that session, we said, please come up with a new food menu that we can maybe use for, for, for our customer, you know. And we give them taliu thong kham, which is the, what do you call it, taliu, um, fry, uh, you know, the thing that we use for fry, uh, stirring the food in gold, golden one as a reward. Things like that that encourage people to think and be part of the process rather than wait for us to tell them to do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kuntan, for your very inspiring speech. Um, congratulations on your success. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. Uh, when, when you were with Leo Burnett, you were very at the chairman of the company. Now, uh, in your new venture, you are also very, very successful in a business, in actually in two very different types of business where I think uh, a lot of people uh, or a lot of companies rather fail and you succeed. So that's quite an achievement. Now, what I'm interested is in your jobs in both areas, what is the biggest challenge? What is the critical success factor? What makes it that <laughs> make you stand out and make you so, so successful while the majority fail? Oh, <laughs> that's a very difficult question. Uh, well, well, one thing, the, even though they're two different industries, but it's something that I love. That's why I'm, I'm always intrigued with advertising when I, and also food and fashion. When I first graduated, there was three things that I really liked. One is advertising because I studied uh, from London, uh, graduated from London and British advertising is really fun, very witty and the craftsmanship is you know, very beautiful and all that. So advertising always intrigued me. Um, the other thing is I like shopping. And I like to sit at the cafe and watching people, you know, because cafe is in the middle of the city and always a lot of people walk past by and, you know, I, you know, it's these three things that I really like and I end up, I'm lucky that I end up working in these three areas, you know, advertising and then Greyhound fashion, Greyhound cafe. So I think you have, you have to start off with the work that you really like. You, work that you really love or have a passion for. So that is one thing. In order to keep you waking up every morning and looking forward to the new project that is coming up, you know. For me, that's the most important thing. But to make this, uh, this business successful, I guess it's just the same. You know, I have to borrow Nike slogan, just do it. You have to keep doing it. There's no other way. This is it's like bicycle, I think. You ride it and you cannot slow down. But once you slow down, it sort of flop, you know? So you have to keep on riding. So you have to keep on coming up with new ideas, provoke people, you know, in your company to work, to share this same 
uh, mission, vision, and all this kind of thing. Just normal business thing, I guess. But the most important thing is something that you love, and you select the people that love and share the same thing with you in order to move together. I guess that's my answer. Really drives you inside, but I would like to know: Do you sometimes lose motivation? And if yes, what keeps you going? Lose motivation? Oh, definitely. <laughs> we all go through that in our life, you know. Um, I think that's normal. I mean, you can't be high all the time. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's why you have friends, uh, uh, and I treat my colleague at work as friends. We go out together, uh, we, I don't know, we, we just share idea together. We sort of, when, we, when I'm down, that, uh, next, uh, the next person to me is still high. So <laughs> there's a balance between the, the team, I guess. That's very important, the team. Uh, I, 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 I believe that everything is our collaborative work. That you, you need friends, you need teamwork, a good teamwork to support your idea. You can't do it alone, no way. Marketing by Philip Kotler, you know, product pr pr price, place, promotion, uh, and then you talked about the core values. Every company should have core values, and then born out of love things. Uh, I want to understand, and of course, I see a lot of adaptations from you know, uh, from the street food, from like the people how they uh, dress up, uh, and then inculcating the creativity in Greyhound. Uh, what would be the uh, product placement of Greyhound. It's like the core value where, you know, you want Greyhound to be seen like and then developing from there. Because people today are like banking on vegan food, organic food, health, but I see the shirts of, uh, you know, the servers actually saying that go for the desserts, life is short. <laughs> so where do you place your, you know, the product placement or the service placement? How do you place Greyhound and they grow from there? Um. Like I said, we have to understand ourselves first uh, in order to produce, keep producing this. That's what I'm talking about, the belief or our style. In the fashion, you know, there's a style. Um, we consider ourselves a simple person or we like to be simple. We, our fashion is not elaborated. So is our food, you know. Our food is very basic thing. So. We don't try to be a fine dining. We know we cannot do a fine dining. I can't always go to work in a perfect suit and tie and all this, you know. It's not us. We don't feel right. So we know ourselves. That's our style. So that's why most of our food is very easy to identify with. But how do you make it different? How do you involve people and enjoy it? Like, there's one menu that's Nam Prik Patu. Nam Prik Patu is very common, very common uh, basic Thai uh, food with fish, fried fish, and uh, uh, the curry paste. This is something that I think we all know, uh, all Thai would know and eat at home a lot. It will come in fried fish, different vegetables, and curry paste. So when you do, you have to put one here, one, uh, one of this, one of this, all together. But instead, we decide a salad, Nam Prik Patu. So we put everything in one bowl, put the Nam Prik, uh, Nam Prik, as a, Nam Prik is a curry paste as a dressing and mix it all together. Suddenly, it's become a new type of food that appeals to new generation. They feel like 
oh, this is so easy. I have only one hour for lunch. You know, let's order this, and we can just one bite with the rice, and you can have uh, number no two, which is less troublesome. Things like that. That that uh, we think that that's our concept. So don't talk to me about very complicated French menu or something. I don't play with that. <laughs> no, but I like simple French food. <laughs> So that's, that's, that's the idea that we have to get everyone to understand and we can carry on doing that. Yes. Okay, we're going to take maybe a last uh, question. Yeah. So, hello. First of all, um, I'm very appreciative for your time. So you is the one who drive me out of bed oh. by today. Thank you very much. <laughs> So at, I, at least, I, I at least this I'm, morning, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I come first, yeah, because it's a topic also, and also the, the speaker, I, I would say. So uh, I learned from today is um, uh, if you would like to sell something, uh, the customer don't buy what you do, right? And uh, how can make customer believe? It? I think it's a very strategy mm -hmm. and it's a very important mm -hmm. and I mean maybe it's a game change mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. because uh, I'm in the IT industry mm -hmm. and in the IT industry is not like a, you know advertising mm -hmm. or entertainment mm -hmm. it just work by one two three digital mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. oh, and how can I, I you know, like a convince or influence mm, them mm, to believe. Mm, yeah, mm. this is my question. I mean, well, IT, Apple is IT product, right? Yeah. So it's nothing, yeah, service and thing, right? Software and all that, right? Yeah. So maybe, well, it's, dip, it's different because um, you are not creating the product to sell, but you may be giving a service and so on. Well. Ask yourself, what is your belief? First of all, what is your belief? I just do it for money, or I love this job, and I want the best software for your client, the best service for your client. You provide hotline, or the client have to keep calling you 20 times before they can get you. All this type of thing is the attitude, is the, is the belief that you would want to offer to your client. Make sure that that belief come out more than how can I fix this? How can I rewrite the software for your program and all this kind of thing? That's okay, that's a basic thing that you have to provide. But beyond that, what is your attitude to your work? And once, you know, like when you go to a noodle shop, nothing, it's a noodle. But is the noodle, the soup taste good? Is the fish ball that, you know, a lot of time now when you go on street food, Fish ball, I don't understand why would they buy this fish ball. It tastes so terrible, and they still continue to sell it. You know, what is, your, what is the, uh, the, the ingredients that, that they use? Are they putting a lot of love and care into that? Um, the service, you know, do they say hi to you because it's a neighborhood uh, noodle store? Do they exchange, you know, conversation with you and things like that? That's part of the, the brand. Even though it's a noodle shop, it's a, it's a brand. Your service is a brand. What is your attitude? What is your belief? Communicate that out. Express it. You know. Go and have a look at this Simon Snake. S I N E K. Simon Snake TED Talk. Incredible talk on this one. Well, let's get a big round of applause for Kun Bainu. Thank you so much. <laughs> We, we could not get a better speaker for the launch of, of Creative uh, Mornings Bangkok than Kun Benu. Thank you so much for your inspirational talk. And I'm sure all of you, when you will look at the fish on the table of the restaurant, you will think about it in a different way nowadays. Okay, let me just do a couple of little things. First of all, I would like to thank all the volunteers who help us today to make it happen. So all the IKI team, all the photographer, and everyone who have been here. Thank you so much. We'll not have been able to do it without you guys. 
Uh, I would like also to announce the next uh, Creative Mornings event will be on uh, Friday, October 16. And like I said before, the, the topic of the month will be shock. And uh, so we invited uh, Kun Valent, uh, who is the CEO of Playboy, who is here with us today, to be the next speaker. So book it on your calendar, October 16, uh, shock with uh, Kun Valent. So once again, thank you all for being here today. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, we are looking for some volunteers. If you want to help us, please let us know. And we are looking for sponsors too, to make it happen. So if you're willing to sponsor and help us run this event, it's a non-for-profit event. We are all volunteers just to help make the event a bit more fun. Thank you so much and see you on October 16 uh, with Kunvalent for shock. Sawadee crap, kapun crap.